Hi! Last year I made a video of the unboxing of our Keurig Mini coffee maker and I also made a video of the first cup and that was almost a year ago and since then we've been using it in our RV because the size is really great to put under, it fits under the sink real nicely. It's uh, just a good size for the RV and it's great for at home and usually we only make two cups in the morning so it's just perfect for us in the RV. But we found after using on a few trips that it's a little bit inconsistent. It doesn't always, it makes the first cup real well but sometimes the second cup is a problem to to get made and to, to get made warm enough so I'm going to do two cups of coffee today and see how it does so the first thing I'll do is plug it in and I'll push the on button so it's lit and I have two cups of water they're about 10 ounces each and they're filled up to about here which is I think a good average size for a cup of coffee and each of them are almost 80 degrees just under 80 for that one and same for this one so just to be fair it's not ice water and it's not hot water it's about room temperature so the first thing you do is you fill the reservoir and you fill it above the minimum but not above the maximum line and 10 ounces is good because the maximum is 12 ounces so that should work well then I've got a k-cup I'll open the lid is it turned on yes it is it's okay. turned on close the lid the light starts flashing and I will push the button oh and I'll also put the cup under here It's not working. You know why I think it's not working? Because this is the second take of this video and I've already made two cups of coffee within the last 20 minutes. I'll share that little secret with you, that off-camera secret. I've already made two cups of coffee within the last 20 minutes and it's not working this time. What should I do, Bill? What do you recommend? I would open it back up. Okay, that's what most people would do, most reasonable people would do. Okay, and it's turned on. It is. The light's lit. Okay. Close it. And I see the little light blink in there. Blinking. And I'm going to try pushing the button again. It sounds like it's it's actually you can see in the back it has drained some of the water mm -hmm. from the reservoir from the oh reservoir boy. some of the water has gone into the heating element because it's down below the, the 10 ounces there okay so I am not the Keurig expert I don't work for Keurig I haven't gone to Keurig University but I'm just your average person who likes a cup of coffee mm -hmm. And we did just make another video, but it was kind of long and drug out, so... So, he wanted me to do it again. And it was going to be just a little quick, simple video, but... We eh. might just put them both together. So, you can see that it did make two good cups of coffee earlier. Like yeah. within 20 minutes. What if you want another cup? He says, too much caffeine for you, no coffee for you. But what if you have three people with you? Okay. It's not doing anything. Well, so the next thing we always do is we turn it off. Turn it off? Yeah, hit the power button. Let's try lifting the handle one more time. Okay. And I, granted, I didn't stick this under here until... That doesn't make a difference. There's, yeah, there's no sensor here that no. says the coffee cup's there, so that didn't matter. Just want to address that. Alright, it's flashing again. Let's push the button. And then it looks like it's drained out a little bit more water from the reservoir. 
Well, you can't put more water in and start over. No. Because you'll have too much water. We're just kind of stuck. Okay, so I guess the only thing you do is turn it off and unplug it. Okay, turned off, unplugged. Okay. Let it reset. Okay, plug it back in. It should have Jesus, done I'm something. I'm going to turn it on now. And the little power light lit? Yes, the power light is lit. Okay. But the indicator light is not doing anything because I need to lift yep. the handle. So you take that out. Okay, put it in, put it in the cup there. Close it. And now it's, I can see it's blinking. Mm-hmm. Are you supposed to wait till it's solid instead of blinking before pressing the button? Well, I'm not supposed to heat up the water. Has to get the water into it. Yeah, it heats it. When it's blinking, it's heating it, I think. Let's just let it blink for a Let's few Let's let it blink and see if it ever goes solid. But it's, you know, I'm thinking back to the directions. I think it's supposed to be solid first and then you press it. So why is it blinking? Obviously, I don't know how to make a cup of coffee. I'm going to push the button. What do you think? Sure, push the button. Oh, wait, hey, okay. And you can see it's pulled out some more water. The, the reservoir is almost empty now, so it has water in there. But it didn't drain the entire reservoir. There's still water. It should drain the entire reservoir, then heat it, and then dispense. I think... I need to open the lid again and maybe press a different area of the button. All it's right. a big button. Maybe I'm not pushing the right spot on it. Shall I open it again? I'm going to open it again. Okay, I'm going to really, I'm going to try and push every part of the button. So make sure I, because isn't there a magnet in here? Somebody said that we read. Yeah. Okay, I've pushed the whole thing. Okay, is it slow blinking now? Yes. Okay. Now it's slow blinking. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe that um, okay, now sweeping see. motion of a push helped. That helped. Okay. So, from this I've learned that you've got to like, push it all the way around with one motion. And then maybe you'll get some coffee. I hope so. And I'm not trying to be mean to this thing. I'm really, I'm trying to give it a chance. There we go. But when you're in, it's in the morning time and you want a cup of coffee, you want a cup of coffee. Without all these shenanigans. Okay. Let's see if it's a nice hot cup of coffee. Does it look steamy? Put it down. I don't want it to heat up from being holding my hands. And then we'll make a second cup of coffee. So it's like you and me both want a second cup of coffee this morning. I made two good cups of coffee before with minimal effort. <laughs> All right. What's the temperature? Wet row. <laughs> It's 125 degrees. 
Yeah, there's that 120. Zoom in there. That is 125. Let's see, you gotta get in focus here. That's, Got it? It's not gonna focus. Okay. It's 100. 125. Put it Trust back in there. Let it sit there a little bit longer. Trust me. Let's give it every chance to get higher. So, to me, 120 degree coffee is a cup of swill. Because I put cream in it. And I like my cream cool so it's fresh. <laughs> this is not going to be a good cup of coffee. And what's the temperature now? Uh, 128. Okay. So eh. okay. All right. In the meantime, somebody who doesn't like hot coffee can have this one or yeah. doesn't like cream in it. Okay. Now we're going to make the next cup. So I'm going to uh, open up the reservoir. Mm -hmm. Put in the 80 degree water. It's not like I'm starting with cold water. And you can see in the tank back there. It's it's good. It's not over full. It's not over full. Because it only fills a cup up to here. That's about yeah. what you usually drink. Close it. It's turned on. I'm lifting the handle, taking out the old cup, putting in the new cup. It's flashing. So I'm going to push the button and I'm going to give it a good push. I'm going to push it like anybody would push it. I'm just going to push it. Okay, and you can see it drained some of the... And it didn't work. It drained a little bit of the water from the reservoir. You can tell immediately that it's pretty much not going to work because it doesn't keep that... Noise. Noise, yeah, that humming sound. So it didn't work. So I, I, so I didn't go like crazy pushing the button. I just pushed it. And it didn't work. So... I'm wanting a cup of coffee, so I'm going to lift the lid and try it again. And this time, since I'm kind of experienced with fooling with this, I'm going to give it the big old... And it is blinking. It's blinking. I'm going to give it that big old everywhere push. Because it's a big button. It's like that wide. Here we go. Okay, I have made contact with it everywhere. Okay, turn turn work. turn the thing so you can see the, the tank there, okay? Yeah, see? Yeah, it's down to there. It was up there, yeah. now it's down to there. Take, take it out. There we go. So I can, it, oh, sorry. That's good. You, so you can see it's drained some of the uh, water from the reservoir. And it's not working. Let's try it again. Maybe I get the button in the right sweet spot this time. Yeah, it's blinking. It's not going to work, I can tell already. <laughs> it's not working this time either. It drained a little bit more of the water. You just turn it just like that. There okay. we go. You can see it was on the eight, so now it's down to above the six. It's like about seven cups in there. It's, a, it's above the minimum still. But it's not doing nothing. Try it one more time. And if I'm doing something wrong, and you've noticed me doing something wrong, Keurig people, or anybody watching comment the video. or anybody else, yeah, let me know what I'm doing wrong because I would like to be able to use this in the RV because it's a good size for an RV coffee pot. We have an inverter, 2,000 watt inverter. That's why we like a 2,000 watt inverter so we can make our own coffee. But you gotta have a working coffee pot. Okay, and the light is blinking. Yep. And I pushed and, it. And you see the water's drained out. <laughs> is that about four temps? Three, three temps at least. Yeah. I lost count. I think it might be four. I think so. <coughs> <coughs> well, it's not doing nothing. No, no, it's just quiet as can be. There's nothing going on in there. Let's do it again. And there's not much water left in the reservoir. Okay, I'm just going to do a, a nice push, not a crazy push. I think that did it this time. Maybe. It's... Okay, yeah, now yep, it's blinking. this time it's working, okay. So now it's doing something. Okay, blinking. don't say it's because I did these crazy pushes, because I did do a nice push in between. 
because I think on the last part, of the first part of the video, it took a crazy push to get it to work. A crazy push is just a push around the whole button, just yeah. kind of moving the whole button down. Yeah, make sure I didn't miss part of the button being pushed down and making contact somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like a, nothing else that, nothing really crazy. It's just me talking this way because it's frustrating. Okay, now the coffee's coming out. Oh boy! We have a big Keurig that we use in our house and it works great. We like it. Mm -hmm. It works perfect every time. But And actually this Mini is our, our second one because we bought a Mini and used it a little bit and it started acting up. We couldn't get it to work. We uh, returned it and we got another one because we love this size. It's a great mm -hmm. size for the RV. Yeah. And it's doing the same thing, so we thought, well, maybe the first one was broke, uh, but what's the odds of getting two broken ones? So we did a lot of searching online, and we found a lot of reviews where people just can't stand this Keurig. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, I just enjoy a good cup of coffee, and it's kind of hard to get it with this. The regular Keurigs have little buttons somewhere on the side that you push. They don't have this big disc on the top. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they need to do little buttons. Okay, what's so the temperature? So let's see what the temperature is. Okay, the thermometer is reading 70 degrees. It's November here in Georgia and 70 degrees in the house right now. It's a 130 degree cup of coffee. Yeah, 130 degrees. Not okay. real good. I'm gonna put some half and half in it, or milk in it, and see how what that goes down to. Well, you're gonna waste, you're gonna waste the good half and the milk. No, it's just milk, not half and half. Okay, this is how much I would put in. I kind of like my coffee blonde. Not insanely, but just a little bit. Yeah, that's the way I like it. Now it's 110 degrees. Let's see how it tastes at 110 degrees. And show it to the camera so you can see what the, milk, the coffee looks like. Okay. Well, here. You know, it's not that much. Hang on. You got to get down right. There we go. It's not a lot of cream. Yeah, here's the one next to it without. You have to pull out so I can see it. There's no cream in that one, the first one, and this is my cream. That's the way I have to drink it. I probably am sure this. Some people like it the same way as I do. I'm trying to hold it still. You got it? Uh huh. Okay, let's see how it tastes. It's almost cold. Okay, what's the temperature? So, well, yeah, what's the temperature? Yeah, what, what temperature do you normally like to drink it at? It's cool. It's, it's, within a minute now, it's going to be undrinkable. Yeah. It's 112 degrees. It's going to be undrinkable. So that's the story of our mini Keurig. Um, do I do I recommend buying one? No. no sorry. No. It's I, I don't like to make bad reviews on things. I like everything to work well. This is what we do now. We have a little drip. It's an inexpensive. Can I say the brand name? Sure, it's a Black and Decker. It's a Black and Decker. Bought at Home Depot. Yeah. It costs under $15. It was like right at $15. Yeah, here it is. Um, I guess if we don't edit out the first part, you know, of us making this. It took two minutes to make this. So it took two minutes to make this coffee here. And it's consistent. It's good the first time. It's good every time. It stays mm. warm. I plug it in, you know, it'll stay warm. And for RVing, it fits under the sink too. We take this part and wrap a, that's the only downside is this is breakable. So we'll wrap a dishcloth around a dish towel and we'll sit it up. Inside the microwave. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. Or sometimes we set it up above the, um, where some of the, oh, yeah. the closet we don't use, a small closet. We keep DVDs in there. Sometimes it's a real small closet. So that's what we use now. 
I hate that this doesn't work well. Yeah, it was gonna be. A, it was a great idea when we bought it. I thought, oh, this is perfect. It's small. Yeah. And we like Keurig coffees. Um, listen, we've had several of them. But yeah. excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh -huh. Go ahead. No, we had several Keurigs, yeah. but that one just does not work. Because I want to share something else I just thought of. So we get coffee for this. We use filters. They're two hundred for two dollars or less. They're cheap. Yeah, and then the coffee. This canister makes up to 180 six ounce cups of coffee. So I use one of these scoops for each cup of coffee and this costs us at Dollar General less than six dollars. Yeah, maybe like five five dollars or so. You can always find coffee on sale. Mm -hmm. So this is what we do now. And this is actually for the RV a lot less space taken up than K cups. Yeah. Because this much space you might get 20 K cups if you're lucky. Yeah. So it's better for the space. But, yeah. so, um, so that's so, it. Um, happy coffee maker shopping, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Take care. Have happy holidays. Goodbye. Thank you.